So we'll do the same thing as usual. Just start with a kind of brief explanation of who you are. And then I'll do a brief explanation of who I am. And then we'll get started into the questions. All right. Uh, well, my name is Adam Barrett. And uh, I'm a armchair apologist and philosopher. And um, no degrees or anything. I just uh, read articles and watch videos. And uh, same thing I've always done. Uh, as far as that, and you know, uh, I'm a Christian. I uh, non-denominational. I was raised Baptist, um, but that's about it. All right. So, anybody watching the video should probably know who I am, but I'll I'll go ahead and go through it. I'm, I've been a deist for something like twelve years, and um, yeah, I think somewhere around twelve years. And there's, there's several other videos I've done kind of discussing what that is and what that means and other discussions that I've had. And um, hopefully we can make, you know, gain some ground here on the, on the morality question. And I was wondering if non-denominational was the way to classify your, your uh, position. And um, so what, yeah. would you, what would you say leads you to that saying non-denominational? Well, uh you know, I, I was I was raised um, I was actually raised in a pretty niche form of Christianity. It was a, it was a niche denomination that's uh, a small group that can, kind of tends to follow an obscure preacher that's dead now. Um, and so, I, I growing up, you know, I uh, was sort of sort of like Baptist. You could you could c compare it to Baptist, and. Um, I went off in my own direction about 17 or 18. I, I was in a punk band. I've uh, traveled a lot. And, and so for a long time, I, I, I wouldn't consider myself a Christian. And um, there was, there was a, a point in my life where I came, I came back uh, fully, intellectually, uh, spiritually, and From there, I began to do a lot of research on it. You know, I wanted to know different. Not, what were the differences between the denominations? Why were they split? Uh, what's the what was the history behind that? And, um, it, it's it's astonishing to me how similar all the all the Protestant denominations really are when it comes down to to it. It's, it's just little minor things in doctrine or. Uh, philosophies about the holy spirit or or you know small things i think and in, in the long run but over centuries became these big schisms and um you know i've i've been to a lot of different churches especially traveling um and i would kind of consider myself similar to a pentecostal because i i had a lot of experiences with with, with spiritual things and so that would be Kind of in the mystic domain where where Pentecostals belong, and, and 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 you know Eastern Orthodox sometimes has a little bit of that. They 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 emphasize that. Um, but in in Protestantism, there's uh, kind of two camps as far as that goes. Where you have you have these um, dispensationalists uh, like Baptists or mm, sort of largely dispensationalists, where they they would be shocked, you know, to have, especially these Southern Baptists. I don't know about other Baptists in, in parts of the country, but they'd be they'd be mostly shocked if if something were to, the spirit were to move in the church and all that. And you have, you know, the. Uh, don't get me started on tongue, but um, I would I would say that mostly I'm a I'm a non denominational non denominationalist because. Uh, I, I don't quite theologically fit in with any particular group, and I don't see enough of a distinction to, to stick a flag, uh, really. So, I, I mean, I'm just a Christian. I believe the Bible, uh, my interpretation of it anyway, as there's multiple interpretations amongst these groups. And, um, for matters like Revelation, versus, you know, for instance. Uh, but... 
I would consider myself closer to a Southern Baptist or, or a Pentecostal, not the Southern Pentecostal, the snake handling type. Right. Uh, but I know, I know I've known some, some friends who were part of those churches. Who were snake handling? Uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty common in our neck of the woods. And, you know, in the hollers. <laughs> so, so what makes, if someone were to say, what's the difference between you and a, a Baptist? What would your, what would your explanation um, be? Theologically speaking, I'm pretty in line with Baptists, but uh, it would be the, the, the mystical side, the spiritual side. I, I, I've had some, I've had lots of strange supernatural occurrences in my life and uh, experienced them in ways that involved me in, in a way that uh, I would say was more like what you would expect from Pentecostal type belief. Um, which is that the spirit is still moving, still doing miracles occasionally, and uh, that that God is active and taking an active role in the church. Okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. Including uh, the dark side as well. So you have active uh, demonic beings, uh, demonic occurrences that really happen throughout the world. You know those. That would be something I believe. Okay. So that would probably, I'm trying to think, you know, the, the, um, you say closest to the Southern Baptists. Um, I've known a few Southern Baptists, I think that would, would agree with, um, what you're saying mm. there. There's a moth in here. Um, yeah, that would say, uh, that there's a, you know, demons working and, and things like that in the world. Right. Um, all right. So we'll start into the, uh, we'll start into the questions. So as you know, there's three of them. And like I said, the, the first couple generally, I would expect to be pretty quick, pretty quick answers. And then the third one is the one I think that was, is going to result in the most discussion. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. So question one, is you know what is morality okay so in from from the way that i see it uh morality is a transcendental intangible law uh in the universe that describes the, the way maybe that math or physics describe objects and, 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 and number would describe the interaction between two conscious beings. And by conscious, I mean, I mean, cognitive self-aware and then capable of morality, capable of, of being moral, um, of, or of ethics. So I think, I think that even occasionally this could extend to certain animals. Um, but that was going to be my next, I, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think, I think the animals have a, a demi personhood so that they could have a demi morality even. Um, and, and by demi, I mean, uh, not necessarily self-aware or, or, or aware of other conscious beings being conscious. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, we, we can't gather any data from the animals of, on this. And so, I mean, not, it's not subjective data that they could tell us. So I'm not sure about that, but I think morality is a set of laws inherent in the universe that allow conscious beings to interact um, or that describe maybe how they interact. Um, okay that makes sense yeah yeah my next question was going to be you know some people seem to have a moral conviction when it comes to like the uh treatment of animals and and the um you know j just the way we we act towards other animals they tend to have a moral view of that 
And um, so that was the only thing when you were talking about between two self-aware beings, you know, that, that's what I was kind of thinking about in my head was like, what about animals? You know, the, uh, the thing that, the thing that popped into my mind, you know, was like the, one of my favorite animals on the planet is a mountain gorilla. And uh, they're due to increasing pressure from the, from Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And eventually their numbers right now are stable, but eventually th there's not a whole lot of hope for that species living in the wild. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a part of me that feels that there's a moral issue with that. Um, yeah. Just allowing the species to go extinct. Yeah. And, um, like it should be, you know, the, the, the park rangers over there, the people actually trying to protect those animals are, it's a military. I mean, they have, they, to, to look at them, they look like soldiers, you know, the, the type. Yeah, some of them might've been. Yeah. Uh, it's because that's, that's a big part of what they do is, is a lot of the money in that area comes from tourism. And if the animals are gone, then the tourism has gone. So they it's their main, right. It's their main uh, thing, you know, that they do there. So that the people, it, it, the park rangers sim are actually similar soldiers. to the people that, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say similar to the people that protect from poachers. Uh, they'll, sometimes have to hire these like contract mercenaries basically um, to, to defend from poach poachers. Uh, yeah. All right. So we'll go to, um, we got, I, I made a note here when you said um, transcendent intangible law. So we may come back to that when we, when we get into the other discussion, because I, I just wanted to explore that a little bit more. Um, so the, okay. the second question is, where does it come from? Um, well, you probably know, I, I think it comes from God. I think morality is, uh, I, it, it seems to me that the way that it, intuitively, it seems to me that the, the way that morality binds us as conscious beings with not only rest restrictive acts like, Hey, don't do this. Don't do that. You know, there are prescriptive laws about morality. Like if you are going to be moral, you should do this or you should do that. Um, so it, it can be a call to action, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the, the nature of, the way that it pulls on us uh, intuitively seems to come from something outside of us because sometimes even it will demand that we deny ourselves. And uh, even, even in the case of things like firefighters or, or someone jumping in to save a, uh, somebody from a bus, you know, um, you deny yourself and your children, uh, and your wife and, and everyone that loves you, you deny them your you and you deny you you uh, for the sake of another person. I think that and we call those people heroes, you know, and everybody kind of generally understands that that what that person did was was tremendously good. You're wrong. And yeah. yes, and uh, we aspire to be those people mostly. And I think that. The way that morality pulls on us and it pulls us, it seems to be ever upwards towards something better. What, what, it's a subjective term, better, but, but you can see where I'm getting at. I mean, intuitively, we know that the more you act like that person, the better everybody is. The better you are and the better life is for everyone on the planet. Um, and the converse is true. That if you don't do these things, uh, if you don't act as if this is a real law, you can damage your children's lives. You can damage your your life. Everyone will suffer. Uh, and sometimes millions of people will suffer. 
right. depending on who you are. And um, I think intuitively this, this upwards pulling is, is, is uh, spiritual. It seems spiritual to me. It seems something that um, is a gift. And it seems something that because it, it, it's only applicable between conscious beings, two minds interacting with one another, I, it seems like it comes from a mind or, or it, it, it had its potentiality with a mind. Um, because if, it, if it's inherent in our universe, which I, I think it is, uh, and we could talk about that, but if, if it is inherent in our universe, I think that it must have come from something outside of it, like, like physics uh, or math. I think um, where our, they, it seemed, they seem to be prerequisite laws for the universe to, to actuate and to, to, to be the way that it is. And I think uh, it points to a, a conscious mind, a moral mind. Um, and, and you could say, like, you could say that if, if, if it came about through, let's say, let's say a superpowered AI created the universe and we're in a simulation, uh, or let's say ev evolution created uh, mankind um, and we evolved morality. In either of those situations, it seems to me that you're left with like a utilitarian uh, cold morality is what I would call it, a cold morality, where it's beneficial to everyone and it's beneficial to you, but there's no, there's really no good or evil. And, and you, if you really break it down, you know, you can, you can parse this morality that we have to look utilitarian, but I think intuitively everyone knows evil when they see it and when they, well, the, the word that we use to describe it is almost not visceral enough to what it actually is. It, and mm -hmm. it, it's people, when they see evil, have physical reactions. They'll throw up. I mean, people will throw up from an act of violence or, or not just violence, from, from knowing of an act of violence was done. They don't even have to see it. You know, I, I remember uh, seeing in a newspaper that um, basically we had done an act of war and, and people died. And I remember the feeling uh, that I grasped at that moment it was many years ago, but it was debilitating. I mean, I had physical sickness. Mm -hmm. From, from the knowledge that people had committed evil against one another in such a way. So, uh, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I, I, I had a, a similar experience when I was in school, um, when I was in high school that you remember they, they started putting these, uh, beheading videos online, the, mm -hmm. they were, being filmed in the in the Middle East and they they were putting them online and you know I was like 15 and everybody was talking about yeah. it and I remember several of us decided to look it up and watch those videos and yeah. for I think that it was 2 days before I could eat um after yeah. watching those videos I I remember I wanted to go home I, we watched it between first and second period and I was I was done with people I I wanted to go home and and just curl up in the bed and not talk to anyone you know, yeah. for, I mean it was it was I I you know I've, I've had similar but but definitely not to that extreme reactions to some of the um, stuff that I've seen you know coming out of the world in various areas and, and what's the kind of acts being performed um, but that was definitely the worst was was watching that and thinking and trying to come to terms with the idea that someone could do this and yeah um, 
but yeah, I remember, I, I definitely agree with you there. It, it definitely causes a physical, when, when confronted with that kind of evil, it, it causes a physical reaction. I definitely agree with that. And what, you know, that makes me, that reminds me of something that uh, would be pertinent to the discussion is that, you know, uh, you remember like rotten.com and, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. It'd be one of the yeah. websites you might be able to use to see something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'll tell you that there was a point in my life where I could watch, I've, I've been there. I, I could watch some of these videos and not really feel anything. Um, and this was before I was, this is long before I became a Christian for real, but there was a point in my life where it didn't bother me, mm -hmm. you know, and I, at, at the point that I'm at now, I can't even watch fake gore. It, 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 it bothers me, man. Right. I can't even watch a horror movie. Like even some of the silliest ones, it's, it's hard for me to watch. I mean, I, I physically just, I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've found that since, since my son was born, you know, he's three now. Yeah. And I've found that, you know, where before I could watch movies where children were getting killed. Right. And not have a problem with it. And now uh, you know, I, I started when I when I go to work out in the evenings, a lot of times I'm on the elliptical and I'll go to, I'll say, okay, I'm going to start a movie and I'll watch this movie while I work out. And I started, it was just some random zombie movie. And um, generally I don't have problems with those, but I remember there was, it started out with this zombie attack on a bus. And I don't remember the name of the movie now, but um, or was it zombies? Anyway, I don't remember. It might have been that mm. uh, that vampire movie, that Days of Night. Um, uh, yeah, uh, when they're in Alaska. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're way mm. up north somewhere. and 30 anyway, Days of Night or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so there was a scene at the beginning where this these things are attacking people. It's, it's supposed to be like vampires, I think, um, mm. are attacking people on this bus. I think this could be a completely different movie. So if, <laughs> if I'm wrong here... Um, I definitely could be wrong. Anyway, this, the things were attacking people on this bus. And I remember being like, okay, you know, I'm just like, I'm only lived to go. I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. And then it's like, it gets to this scene where there's a woman holding like a two year old. Yeah. And I got so angry. <laughs> I was like, this is fucked up. I was like, you know, I mean, like I was, I started like, what would I do? You know, like, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, that definitely my whole view of, viewing things like that changed um yeah yeah anyway so um i wanted to go back to to one thing you were talking about uh, inherent in the universe and then you compared it to mathematics and physics um one of the things i've always talked about was when i've had these discussions of morality is that 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 our our morality is as you know distinguishably there as you know a mathematical statement like two and two is four and uh you you said something about it transcending the universe and that that, that kind of interested me because it's i always viewed mathematics and physics you know as something that like before humans exist then mathematics is true you know yes. it's, it's still there, there's whether or not there's anybody to observe it and you know, thank goodness we can agree on that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the example I use a lot of times is the Pythagorean theorem. Before Pythagoras stumbled on this concept right. of evaluating a right triangle, it was still true what he discovered yes. about that triangle. It was still a fact, you know, and uh, it's just we now have words to define it and and describe right. the, I think, the reality of that. I think morality is a discovery. Uh, just as you, as you say, and and I think that's evidenced also by the fact that you've discovered more of it. <laughs> that that you you look at this child that's going to die, right, mm -hmm. and be torn to shreds, and you feel something. And and just like me, I can't watch snuff films anymore. I mean, that's terrible, man. It it blows my mind how desensitized I was. I even look back on my drawings and I see evil. I mean, I just see like evil stuff. Why did I do yeah. that? You know, and, and it's like 10 years later, I couldn't imagine being that person. You know, and so I, I was watching, uh, 
the movie uh, Gods and Kings, Egypt, Gods and Kings, the, the same guy that did Noah um, yeah. did this movie. And it was annoying because it, they, they made a lot of decisions in that movie that probably hurt it. You know, like the yeah. the Egyptians were played by just white guys, you know, and one of them, I, <laughs> Ram, Ramses was just a guy with a spray on tan. And I like I had seen the guy in other movies before and I knew who right. he was and it annoyed me. I, and, and it took me a while to get past that that they made some pretty terrible actor decisions and who plays who, you know, <laughs> it was like, I, but once I got past right. that, it was actually a really good movie. I, um, and there was a part in it when it got to the, the final plague. And I've, I've talked about that in, in debate many times, the, the final plague in Egypt and uh, the way that they portrayed that in that movie was, was really powerful. And I think now, similar to what I was talking about in the, with the zombie movie, now it's it sort of hits heavier because I have a you know a three year old in the house, mm. and uh, I still remember that because I, I watched it yesterday, and there was one scene that that really really landed with me, even though they show you know Ramses is this terrible, awful, horrible guy. Um, the way, you know, because the way that he's treating the slaves and everything, but he's got this son that's like, I don't know, in the movie, maybe he's eight, nine months old or so, something like that. And uh, he goes and they see, he goes and meets with Moses in the movie and he comes out and he's carrying the, he's carrying his son. He's kind of wrapped him in this white cloth because he's dead now. The son's dead now. And, uh, he walks up and they talk about something. I don't remember exactly what all they say. Essentially he's saying, you know, it's God did this and everything. Moses is saying that. And uh, Ramses looks at him and he says, is this your God killer of children? And I remember I, because I've debated that topic so many times, hmm. I was like, I almost had to pause the movie and be like, yeah, you know, like it, it was, it was something I've talked about so much, and now it just, it sounds so more, so different since I've got a, you know, I've had a kid. But anyway, yeah. anyway, um, so, so we've, we've we've got past the idea that it's transcendent, you know. So with morality, I would say, you know, even before humans exist, it would be true that if you had two conscious beings that are self-aware, right that it would be immoral for one to take the life of the other for no good reason. Yes. Right. Now, you, the reason I say no good reason, because if you reduce this to a lion and a deer, then you've got reason. You know, the, the lion's going to take the deer's life to eat it, and you can go, okay, that makes sense. Or the wildebeest, whatever it is. I'm sure mm -hmm. somebody would have a problem with just saying the word deer. But, um, you know, that's why I say no good reason. So if, if someone can right. provide for their family and get back then. the... So even if they don't exist, morality seems to hold true enough that if they did, that would be the case. Yes. Right. And that's that's been my, my view on morality is that this is a universe in which that's a function of it. That's, that's part of this universe that exists. Um, so I think we probably definitely agree there, too. Um, so let's get to question three, which we've already gotten into. A little bit question three would be you know how do we use it what's the how does this play a role in our lives and um, what, what i would oh. what i would press on that is if if it's if it's to be derived from god you know if 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 that's the source then that should it seems to me would play some role in the way we use it um but just talk about that a little bit as far as your your opinion on that angle yeah, I uh, I have this quote that I wanted to read from, uh, and I'm sure I'm sure you heard it before. It's from Socrates, and uh, he he, he uh, described his conscience in this way. He said, "I have a divine daemonion from the God which began when I was a child. It is a voice, and whenever it speaks, it turns me away from something I'm about to do." but it never turns me towards anything. And um, so, 
Socrates used it to keep himself out of trouble and, and, and also to make decisions about his everyday life. Uh, and in, in one of his works, Republic, he suggests that it enabled him to become a true philosopher. So Socrates would say that morality or, or his, the, the inner voice which dictated to him his morality would, uh, without that voice, he would not be a true philosopher, he says. Mm-hmm. So, and he, he seemed to think that it came from a divine source as well. Um, and he, you know, he mostly rejected the gods of Homer because they weren't moral, very, they weren't very moral. They were not moral role models. And so he, he kind of imagined this God of the philosophers, which was, uh, had a purpose and order and morality, um, which I think probably played a big part in, in, in the, the understanding in, in Europe of, of who God is. Uh, I think, I think the, um, the influence of Greek philosophy on, on Christianity was pretty profound. Um, and, and vice versa, I would say. Um, when it came about, of course. And then, um, so looking at my notes here. And the way that, so, so another thing I'd like to point out in the way that morality works in culture is, you know, you have, you have a cultural morality, you have a, 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 a law morality. So, so what's legal and what's not, what's culturally acceptable and what's not. And that overlaps some, but not totally. So you'll have things that are culturally acceptable but are illegal. And, uh, you know, we have the morality, the morality of the government itself is usually on a downhill trend. And, and, and it seems like the, the bodies that we organize tend to go downhill in morality while culture may be going uphill. Um, so there's these interactions that are, happening socially but true objective morality what's good and what's bad like what's good and evil uh trend seems to transcend all of that it transcends culture law and self even it even transcends your own self and so you'll be demanded to do things that you would not do otherwise uh or you're demanded not to do something that you want to do um, and maybe very much need to do, uh, so, in, in a practical sense. Would you agree with, with that quote that the morality doesn't charge you to actually act? It only tells you what not to do. No, I would not agree with it. I would say that it, it, it charges you to act, uh, an, an objective morality, especially, um, if it's, if it's, if it's true and it's from God, there's there's probably a lot of good reasons why uh, why it would charge you to act, and um, it seems to be to me to be a totally it it it's pulling us upward towards a per, a perfect goal. The, it seems to me that, that morality has a uh, an end state where. You can't be more moral than this, uh, which is to do every act morally. Um, you can't go beyond that, right? So, so it, it, to me, it's like, let me put it a better way. It, it reminds me of a radio station. So you have a clear radio station, but depending on where you are and what's obstructing you, you can only pick up part of it, maybe. And... Uh, maybe you can pick up the whole thing and it's clear that to me is what like uh, what a conscience is like so maybe the things in your life like your terrible childhood could obscure like crackling on a radio the 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 clear channel that's coming through um okay, so, okay yeah I, I think i see what you what you mean there i the, the way that i've i've talked about this before is 
usually in relation to that um, is that everyone, in, in my opinion, I think what we can observe from people in general is that everyone does have a more or less consistent moral conscience. Right. But that what affects it is things like indoctrination or dogma, which wouldn't be limited to religion. I, and I always try to make sure that I include that, that it could be a lot of other things too. And, and I know, I know the quote that you're, that you were, cause you, you mentioned it in your other discussion. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Weinberg quote, Stephen Weinberg. Right. Quote. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and there's another thing that I can think of that, that would contribute to, to someone's immorality. If they're a good person, there's a, another thing, drugs, drugs yeah, yeah, sure, or yeah. some sort of uh, mind altering, even schizophrenia, some sort of mind altering process where uh, you're physically, chemically yeah, yeah, imbalanced. And, and that's what I would include with, you know, usually when I talk about that, I say that everyone has more or less the same moral conscience with, minus two things. One is the, the dogma indoctrination angle. And other is physical damage because we know that right. physically altering the brain affects morality. And right. those two things are what we have to, you know, the first one more so than the second. But that's where discussion and debate comes in is to try to free us of as many dogmas and indoctrinations as we can to get to the true morality of things, the, mm -hmm. the real root of it, to that that, that first angle of what can affect morality is what we constantly have to battle against is to see, you know, how many, how many different things that are affecting that can we pull away and remove? And that, that's what I think. It's one of the things that I think religion is very good at is affecting that and, and altering those states of morality. And that's why it does. It does. It always leads me back to that Stephen Weinberg quote that, yep. you know, you know how that goes. I, I have, have an issue with the quote though it because or his concept because uh he mentions okay to get a good person who is mostly good to do a bad thing and and that's where i draw uh uh an issue is is that i i don't really think there's a such thing as good people uh in the sense that and and the bible also tells us this that that nobody's inherently good we have uh, people who are uh, who don't rock the boat and who are there. There are more moral people than I like there. There are levels of morality, but it, it, in, with objective morality as a standard, nobody's reached that. Nobody touches that pinnacle. And so that and, that, and that's probably a good thing because it continues to draw us towards that further stretching up up. Uh, and climbing this mountain of trying to improve ourselves. We always have something better. Uh, you, you want a goal that continuously is ahead of you um, to, to strive towards. I, I think that is why it's best if a moral system has a perfect standard. Um, because even the best person at it isn't going to hit the standard, but they could continue to try. Uh, which will improve them. It's a, it's a continuous improvement and, process. And, I, and now you say that the, the mora the morality that we have charges us to act, and, and yeah. not only okay. So, so if the morality that we have charges us to act, would it not? If 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 it comes from this ultimate standard, which I'm assuming would be God in this view. Yeah. Right. Right. If it comes from that moral standard, it would charge that God to act too, right? It would. It would probably charge the God to act perfectly in in, in the full capability of of power. So, so if He's the origin of this standard, which or or His nature, I would say His nature is where, like a, like a property, is where morality comes from. So, if His property is to be moral. He should be probably the most moral uh, being. And I think that's also a prerequisite for being a worshipful God, some, something that sure. I should worship. Yeah. You know, uh, that has almost everything to do with it. Power is one thing, but power in the hands of a merciless, merciless God, uh, you know, you don't want to worship that guy, um, right. no matter how powerful he is. So, uh, 
So let's one of the things that I did, you know, uh, that I brought up to, during the uh, discussion with Logan is, is something that I bring up a lot when I talk about morality. Mm-hmm. And that is the the way that I view the discussion in general, especially as far as as far as the way it goes when I discuss it with theists. Right. Mm-hmm. So if someone says, OK, your morality has to have an objective standard. I say, OK, I'm not sure that that's the case. But we'll operate on that hypothesis and see, you know, discuss it and see where it takes us. And they'll say, God's that objective standard. And I'll say, okay, I'm, I'm not sure that that's the case, but we'll operate on that hypothesis and see where it takes us. Um, right. The, once you really examine all the, the parameters that you really confine yourself to in that taking these steps towards that conclusion, then you've you've confined yourself to, to, in my opinion, to, to this view, and that's when it comes to claims about that deity's actions. Then, if someone claims that that deity did something that, by our moral standard that's in us, is immoral, if mm-hmm. all the available evidence says it's immoral, then we are obligated in many ways to reject it and say that's not true but then on the same token if if someone describes an action or or a claim that that deity has taken that is moral we're on no obligation to accept it as true but we could say that it could be true right we don't anybody could claim god did a thing that's moral and then we still we don't have to believe them we, you know, we can say, okay, well, that's, you know, fine claim, but, you know, we still don't have to believe. Um, but you, right. you sort of construct for yourself these parameters around what that God is and what it does and everything. And this, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got on the topic of the morality charging you to act and not only informing you what to mm-hmm. not act on, because one of the things that gets that starts bothering me is the idea of complacency and you know, like you're th- this, this grand pinnacle that you're talking about um, would be something that almost the, the only reason that you're not on the pinnacle is for bad decisions. Right. So then you have, uh, yeah, I, I think external factors play a big part as well. Like someone's tr- developmental childhood, I think, is huge when it comes to things like this. You know, sure, it, sure. yeah. So there are obstacles. I, I guess what I was getting at is if, if when someone is born, why are they not at that point on the pinnacle? Because they've done nothing wrong at that point. Right. I, well, you could say they're on the pinnacle or you could say they're off the chart, you know, because <laughs> right, right. they're, yeah, they're, they're not saying. capable. They're not capable of, of making moral decisions. So they're, of okay. course, they're going to be blameless because there's, you know. OK, so, so let's talk about and I want to I want to weigh this scenario by the, the moral conscience that we have within us. Now, a few years ago, well, more than a few now, probably 10 years ago now, I don't know, I've lost track. Mm-hmm. There was a a guy that um, abused an an infant. The infant was, I think, maybe eight or nine months old. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I won't go into detail, but had done a lot of awful things. And thank you. (laughs) The reason, the reason they were able to run him down actually ended up being Facebook. From what I understand, they shared his picture on Facebook and everybody shared it around and eventually they ran him down. And, um, the question that leaves in my mind, if, if, if I'm considering that there's a moral conscience out there, that there's a, an agency that is moral existing in the universe, mm. I compare my actions to it. So let's say I'm, if I'm watching this act take place, I'm going to do everything within my power to stop it. Right. And it would have to be said that it was within God's power to stop it. If, if we're, you know, honest about what it would mean to be an agency and a, and a powerful God, you know, 
then it hmm. would be within that God's power to stop it. And I'm left with that question is if, if I'm standing there and I would stop it, if at all possible, I would do everything within my power and God's there and has the power to stop it and doesn't hmm. just with your own moral conscience that's in you, who is the more moral? Well, okay. With, with situations like this, um, there's so many factors, man, that spring into my mind about, about. Sure. Yeah. It, 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 it's a deep topic. I, I admit that it's, well, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's like, that. like a number one, um, you know, who's to say, cause we can't know who's to say that there are not morally sufficient reasons not to stop it like at this moment in time so to say that that it's it's immoral not to stop it is true in your situation if you were the one standing there but but to god who is in a in a level of uh, he's in a different place and time times like his time dimension is different than ours if, if he even has a a dim, I would say he produced time, but, but like, like, so I imagine it to be like, uh, God is looking at this almost like a fourth or fifth dimensional object, which is the universe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he can see at all times and all places at the same time as it's happening. Uh, and it, rep it will probably to the point where to God, every moment repeats itself. Uh, so in a, in a sense, Christ is always dying. That baby is always right in front of him getting, uh, you know, has right. molested or, or whatever. And, and so I think, um, basically the causality is so different. It, it's like, it's like comparing animal morality to, to human morality. It just doesn't match. There's, it's, there's a complete order of complexity that makes it completely different. And, well, and the laws change as well. well the, I, the, I, I like, think... for instance, the, sorry, but the, the, the lion can kill the deer and it's fine. Uh, so, so just as it becomes in humanity, it becomes not fine. There are rules of morality that change as you go up a hierarchy uh, of this sort uh, uh, of, of beings. And I think that not only is God's hierarchy a bit different than ours, because if he created life, then in, in, in a sense, necessarily he owns it. I mean, uh, and, and not to say that, that, you know, he's free to do what he wants, because I don't think that's what he does. I don't think that's even in his nature because he's a moral being. But um, let me just say that, it's possible that even knowing all the outcomes of, of every possible universe, that this is the one that was created for prime reasons and that not acting on, on the universe at all times may be the most moral way to conduct business for God. It may be very much that the most moral way for us to go through this universe is with a more hands-off approach sometimes. That's a very and, that's a very deistic statement. Well, <laughs> no, well, I don't think so because uh, I think that he does act, and I think that um, I think that even in the end, it's it's not as if in the Christian uh, worldview that this guy's not going to get punished because he is. It's just going to be delayed. Uh, so, so the, the, the guy who, who hurt this child, you know, it's said in the Bible, it's better for you to have a millstone hung around your neck than what's going to happen to you and thrown into the ocean because what's going to happen to you is so much worse. But, but wouldn't it, uh, so th th there's, there's a lot of things that that brings up that that brings up. So the, the, let me, let me try to, to run back through them. So, um, if, if, if I were in that situation, it's, again, it's a hypothetical situation, but let's say I'm in that situation. I'm observing this taking place. 
Hmm. And I know that if, if, it, if it's with all within my power, I'm going to stop it. Then with, with that worldview of, of how morality works in the world, with the, the world where you're talking about, hmm. if I were in that position, it would be better that I don't. Because the, the worldview in which that's allowed to happen by God must be the most moral situation. So, do you see what I'm getting at there? Do you see the, the problem that I have with, I, with that? I, I kind of, I don't think I got your point on that. Uh, can so you, if, can if, you restate that? If because of the worldview, if, if because of the, the, you know, the religion that, that someone's in, uh -huh. the, the belief that they hold, then they're, they're forced to view this situation as something that had to happen as, as a, you know, like you were talking about, this must be the most moral situation because God must be the most moral being. So the decision to let this happen must be the most moral outcome. So this, the, the most moral thing to happen right now is that this, what happened to this child happens. If in a, in a pre, in a presuppositional kind of way, Sort well, of. I mean, that's what that's what I was hearing you say. That the right. sound like you said. So, if but, if but that's, there's if if sorry. that's the case, then it kind of suggests that to stop it would be immoral, because that means you're going to result in some other conclusion that must not be then moral. No, no, I, I don't mean to say that God meant for this to happen. Now that's two different things. Uh, like so. Again, this goes back to free will. Like I, I know that there was a similar sort of discussion with you, uh, with what was his name, Jonathan, the guy that in the last video. Oh no, that was Logan. Logan. Was Logan. Logan. Yeah, the next uh, video after this, the next discussion will be with with a guy named Jonathan. Yeah. Okay, I knew that. I knew I heard of Jonathan in there. Um, but uh, I noticed you guys touched on something similar. But it, it comes back to free will, and what I mean by God not. Number, let me first start off by saying, I think that people would be upset no matter what God did. Okay. So like he, there was a time frame in which he destroyed people's places, cultures, because he had a moral problem with them. He would smite them sometimes. Uh, in, in this, in the old Testament, we see God rain fire and brimstone down on Sodom and Gomorrah because of their evil works. The Canaanites, uh, were terrible, terrible tribe, burn their babies uh, religiously. And, and God smites this people, and we still have people that are upset about that. Uh, to this day, they accuse God of genocide. We, but, you know, if, if he doesn't stop something, they're mad. And if he does stop something, they're mad. And, and this is kind of what you would, uh, you would get if you, ask, if you ask God to be a more obvious, for every situation, you're going to get smitings and, and, and punishments doled out from a, uh, on high. And we hope to God that we are being up to his standard because we, I'd be smited right now. I'd be dead because I've already broken all the laws, you know, uh, well, except murder. I haven't killed anybody yet, uh, but I've done I've, I've had I've, I've stolen things. You know, there's there's I would incur divine wrath on myself if I asked for judgment now and in every time and every place. So, so th th there's several it, thoughts that, that 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 brings up I, I, the the whole, you know, if he does intervene, we're mad. If he doesn't intervene, we're mad. That's right. that's kind of a misrepresentation of the, the problem with what happened with the Canaanites and the Midianites. The the misrepresentation is that the charge was to kill the children that you know and and the the unborn children the charge was to kill them which are demonstrably not guilty of what their parents are doing that's the problem so if, if you were to say we're gonna, okay okay god smite this canaanite that was burning his child no one's going to have a problem with that but if you say god hmm. smite the child because he has a problem with the canaanite burning their child then it's it's self contradictory that's where the problem comes in there is actually there's some context on that that is really interesting and we could go down this rabbit hole, but there is a rabbit hole here where uh, the Canaanites, uh, according to the book of Enoch and, and part of Genesis, the, the Canaanites uh, are descended from the Nephilim. 
uh, and and they were there in the land when when if so if, if you take the Bible in context, when the, when the Israelites first got to Israel, it was populated by giants. They they say that there were giants in the land, and um, I don't think that, that was that there were these. I don't think that was supposed to be only giants. So the, that that verse from Genesis no. six, the that the no. the Nephilim saw the, the the daughters of man and that they were beautiful and took them as wives, many of which they chose. I, I think that's right. The, the literal reading doesn't mean they're all giants and that they're all descended from. No, no, but but they carry these genes inside of them. Is what I'm saying. There's tribes. There were tribes, uh, according to the Bible, that carried these genes. That's why you had Goliath and his brothers popping up at the at the time of David. So, um, yeah, you have you have kind of uh, what seems to be normal human, but but also carry within them these 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 genes. And I mean, that's crazy to say if if you t- if you take the Bible in context, though, there are some. There's extra reasons to see why maybe so then, this God killed these people, even so then, the, even the baby. So then the babies then would have been unavoidably tainted by the the Genesis six monsters. I, so you, I mean, you realize that that is then uh, you were talking about earlier. You know, guilty of genocide. That is definitionally genocide. Then, yeah, yeah. So that, in this in this case now. It, there's, and this is another thing, like we think of the Neanderthals or the Denisovans um, who were, okay, if you had this, comp, com, this uh, com, uh, competitive race of humans that were intermingling with humans uh, and you can see why this could cause a huge problem as far as as the continuation a of our species and and then b of of if god in this context has a plan that he's enacting through humanity and humanity is not there anymore to be enacted through because it's been taken over by another species mm-hmm. uh you, you could see why there would be a problem so like this is this is also the reason by the way that the flood happened uh, it wasn't just that people were evil. It was they were evil because their genes were, were almost completely tainted. The whole earth was about to be, uh, humans were going to go extinct, basically. And the line of Christ would never have happened. Abraham never would happen. Uh, so, so the, and then were, you and I wouldn't be here. So these, um, but, but that makes all those people on the earth to die. That's their only purpose. Well, you know, the, their, their reason for being was, there was never a reason for them to be. Uh, the, whole, the, 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 the context is that the angels made a pact together to disobey God's laws and create hybrid species, which would then wipe out wait, 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 humankind. Wait, 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 so where does that come from? That's, um, that's in the book of Enoch and Genesis six, the, that these angels in the book of Enoch, it talks in depth about this whole scenario and okay, that these so, angels so made a pact. I've, I've never read the book of Enoch. Um, so that, that's, that's why I've never heard that. That's why I was curious where that came from. So if, if it came from it was, Enoch, I've never read Enoch. It was, it was actually, uh, it was pretty much canon in the second century, the temp, the second temple, uh, sorry, not second century, second temple era around the time of Jesus, Jesus quotes it. And, so it's 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 one of those like Deutero canonical books. It's not really canon, but it is kind of. And and the Jews at the time believed it. They so held you, it as true. You feel like it should be part of the Bible now? Well, I think that it would be helpful information. I I I wouldn't say to make it canon. I, I don't have that authority. Um, if it, if it were going to be made canon, I would say that we had, had another council about it. Um, right. and then the church as a whole should decide, yeah, but what, what uh, are the chances of that happening? <laughs> no, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I mean, I wish that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they, they're ever going to communicate that way. Maybe, I don't know. Okay. But, so, so based on, I mean, I, for me, you know, as a deist, right. Um, the idea that a whole race of people just genetically deserve to die is, is disturbing. Well, um, it's 
they're not people. <laughs> I see. And I know that that, that bothers see, and me. That I sounds that sounds like something that you know somebody of the SS would say. You know, they're 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 not they're not hu- they're not people. They're 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 scum. You know, that's sure, not so, what I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. wait I'm, wait, I'm wait, saying before you get to that. So I'm assuming that you would assume that, that you would say this applies to the Midianites. Uh, well, the Midianites were the descendants of Lot mostly and 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 so that's actually one of the reasons why they were treated so gently um gently. they yeah relatively speaking they, they left some of them <laughs> they okay. left some of them alive that's like the midianite virgins they, those are the ones who were allowed to live and, and and part of the reason was because uh something had just and, and this is another thing with context uh with more context that right before god commanded the the destruction of these midianites uh, they had conspired with another tribe against Israel to seduce the men and 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 uh, take take basically try to steal away the religion from them. I, I and that, uh, this I knew was that it said, you know, to what, vex them terribly in the matter of Peor. You know, it's like some some weird uh, reference to a battle. Baal Peor. Um, so yeah, the you know I. I I read the story of the Midianites with kind of a, you know, what are they trying to attribute to what? And uh, the, it's it's nice that they spared the virgins, but, you know, they, they would have killed, if, if the numbers hold true, they would have killed a lot of male babies at that point. And they also would have yeah, killed, they, they, they did. They would yeah. have killed a lot of pregnant women. Because yes. there, there's no clear example that she's been with a man and that she's pregnant. Um, right. They would have done a lot of these things that were are perfectly in conflict with our moral conscience. Um, the uh, the the one thing I wanted to bring up, and you know, so it's interesting you talk about you know the Midianites are the are the descendants of Lot because. Um, I was trying to figure out if you were talking about the Midianites too, when you were talking about, well, genetically, you know, a lot of these people deserve to die, you know, the, the Canaanites and everything again, you know, morally a disaster for me, but I, I'm trying to follow the, the story that you're going through and the Midianites had, I, cause I was playing through the story in my head where the, the soldiers come back from battle and they've spared the women and children. And then Moses says, wait, wait a minute, you're supposed to kill them all. And then they say, no, we, we spared the women and children. And I kept thinking, what else could have happened here that caused Moses to dis- change his mind? And I couldn't help but think that one of the guys might have raised their hand and said, wait a minute. Are you married to a Midianite? <laughs> yeah. And because it's true, it's Zipporah was was the son of a Midianite priest and, and I or the daughter of a Midianite priest. And that was what I was going to ask if you viewed that same genetic problem as existing in the Midianites. But if the genetic problem, uh, if, the, if the genetic problem doesn't exist in the Midianites, then why kill the baby males? Right. So from what I understand, the. The, yes, there would be some Midianites with these kind of uh, genes, um, but but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily make it immediately moral for them to to die. And and another thing is, I, I, I mean, I want to go back on all of this and and speak because uh, I you know, like I said, it sounds it sounds like a Nazi idea that 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 there's these it does it does uh, certainly sound that way it does well and well but here's the thing is that like uh again these are these are not human they're 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 genetically crossed with with angels uh which is well, we don't really understand what that really means either um and, it, and it could be very have, very and, and we also but, don't have any evidence that that's the case right we just have that the bible says so well no you have you have worldwide you have worldwide legends of giants and and, and evidence of of giants, but uh, well, no, 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 no I, mean, I, I mean, being descended from angels. There's no, I, I don't know. No, I, I don't no, even no, know what I'm that not, evidence I'm not, would look like. 
now I'm not arguing this from evidence. I'm not arguing to say that this is objectively true. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You're arguing it from a biblical point of view. From a how, yeah, yeah. So so if you're to take the whole Bible into context and say, well, okay, well, this is immoral and this is not moral. You have to you have to have the the kind of the precursors to that uh, to build up to this to whether. You know, we can say, oh, this is bad and this is good. But unless you know the whole picture and you're, you, you know, and, and then also you have you make that jump to say, well, if I didn't know some of this and, and if it is true. Then what more does God know? I mean, uh, there's so much that I'm not aware of going on here that it's possible that, you know, I just don't know what I'm talking about because. Uh, like, so, so with the Midianites, yeah, there, there's, there were probably, um, some, some genes in, in the Midianites. I would say Jebusites, Moabites, Midianites, Canaanites, uh, and possibly even some Philistines. Um, it seems to be that whole part of that region was populated that way. And, and I, I think that's probably, there's probably reasons behind why they were there in that space. Um, but that's another discussion, but, but basically these things, if they were what the Bible said they were, uh, especially before the flood, then, then you, you it's not just, it's not just as another species of human. This is a totally different, uh, hierarchy of being than we are. It's not but, an but angel. Now, it's not a human. Nights. It was never meant to live some kind of Frankenstein. But, but with the Midianites and the Canaanites, we're talking about after the flood. Yeah, after, yeah, no. But e even after the flood, you have these genes. Uh, but I think I think that it was enough of basically like before the flood, you you had almost the entire earth, even animals' genetics were corrupted. This is why animals came on the ark as well. They were pure creatures that. Uh, didn't have this, you know, even in the Bible, there's, there's an interesting passage where, where it's talking about Moses. It says he was pure in his generations and the, and the Hebrew word generations is the same they use for genealogy. What they're, what they're saying is Moses had a pure lineage uh, and they're talking genetics, um, which I find very interesting. And, and that's in the Bible, not book of Enoch. But uh, so, but the, but this flood event and, and the, uh, the Genesis six event is um, is referenced in the Bible several times, even even later in the New Testament, it's referenced a, a couple times. Uh, those angels who kept not of their own accord or bound in chains and darkness everlasting until the time of the great judgment or something like that. Um, and and so these are the angels of Genesis six uh -huh. uh, that are bound. Uh, so th they're actually in prison right now. According to the Bible, Satan's loose, but these guys have already been locked up. So, I mean, you know what they did was was bad. Um, well, well, wait, wait, so well, where does it say in Genesis 6 that what they did was wrong? Uh, well, I mean, it's mostly implied. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, well, it, 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 it seemed... It, it would almost... I mean, Genesis 6 itself doesn't say that there's anything wrong with that. And it doesn't even mention the Nephilim after. And, well, and, and Nephilim is only used really in the in the Torah. But, you know, in, in right. Genesis 6, it no. just says, you know, men of renown. These were mighty men, men of renown. And it doesn't say anything negative about them at all. The, the word Nephilim is in there. Uh, it's in Genesis 6 in the Hebrew. Um, yeah, yeah, that's um, why I say it's in the Torah. In the Torah, they use the right. word Nephilim, but not in the, you know, English Standard Version. They just no, no, right, right. I, I think because because there was a, um, I think the Catholic Church and and most of the product, Protestant Church has kind of just swept that under the rug. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not major it's not major church theology. I'll well, tell you but, because but it's it's if you're going to use it to to justify the the genocide of the Canaanites, it's it's a big that's a big question. I mean, that's that, that there's not really I, the, the only reason I bring that up is because you're using it as the, the the foundational justification for genocide, and it doesn't even imply that there was anything wrong with these 
with the with the sons of God finding the daughters of men and that they were beautiful and well, took them wives, many of which they it, chose. It, so. It's implied later because what happens is is uh, the number one you have the corruption of the human genome, um, which is that immoral? Well, it depends on if God wants it to, to be done. If, it, if he does not want it to be done, if he has a plan set forth and he's the moral lawgiver, if he's the source of morality, then, then crossing him is probably not the best idea. I mean, it's not a good thing. But, but not, not only did they make a pact to break those laws and do this thing, they were supposed to protect them. Uh, they were called watchers. Uh, they were a group of angels, according according to the book of Enoch. They were a group of angels that were here to protect us and to be like uh, more interactive with humanity than than other angels would be. So, like, um, who knows what good they might have done if they were good? But they decided to do this thing, and what happened afterwards was destruction. Uh, not only of the genome, but but the the races that they produced were eating people. They were cannibalistic, and they were uh, they were ravaging the land. The animals were being corrupted. Um, the the humans were being corrupted. We can assume and that now, the whole uh, earth. Uh, all this is in the Book of Enoch. Yes, and okay. and and the, there's other books that were also in the Dead Sea Scrolls, like Jubilees and Giants. The Book of Giants is another one. Uh, that that deal with this as well so there's like different views on this whole thing happening and most of it revolves around enoch um and his role in this whole story uh so but 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 it seems to be like barely mentioned in the bible but there is a whole lore of of this this time frame that that happened um did you did you uh did you watch the movie the prophecy I don't think so. You should, you should uh, watch it. A lot of this is very similar. The Prophecy 1 and 2, it's uh, Christopher Walken plays the angel Gabriel. And it's okay. It's, it's really interesting. They go into a lot of the exact stuff you're talking about. <laughs> it's, yeah. They're really good movies. Anyway, uh, so l let's hypothesize for a moment. But wait, wait. I, I just want to say that uh, before we move on, I, 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 uh, I wasn't. I'm not solely grounding the, the destruction of the Canaanites or the Midianites off of this idea. I'm just saying that there is some context to see why, number one, that they would be enemies in the first place. But but number two, you know, um, I that's not the only reason even that's given. And in the, in the reason given in the Bible, I think, of the destruction of the Canaanites and, 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 and Midianites is because they were intent on kind of mingling with Israel and, and corrupting Israel. So that I think, I think what God has, has done throughout the, the centuries and millennia is that he established a connection with the world. And then later through Abraham, he strengthens this connection and makes it, more concrete into a culture, into a, divide, a, 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 a divided society in its own little bubble with its own rules and morality and, and view of the world. And, uh, and then through that uses it as a vehicle to deliver, uh, to, to inform the rest of civilization about himself. And, I, and, and, and through this line produces the Christ. Um, the, the culmination, the peace, the resistance of reality. Uh, so there was a time when God must have acted onto the world in a very active way to establish this culture. And he could have done it much more slowly and gently, but he, he did it with a bang. He brought them out of Egypt. He blasted the tribes away uh, in, in competition and war. Uh, for territory, he 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 expanded this territory massively very quickly, um, and I think it was in part a show of power uh, because this is you have to also understand that the, the the prevailing idea of gods was whose is the biggest and whose is the baddest and my god can beat your god, right. and so he was kind of making a name for himself among the other gods, and uh, you could say that you know. Uh, from an evolutionary standpoint, this is all cultural. It's just 
uh, the, the Israelites becoming an, an identity and a nation. But, but from a Christian perspective, God must make a statement to the other nations that he's real, um, that, that your God can't stand up to him because he's, he's actually real. Your, your God's a piece of rock, and uh, this one is alive and, and works for his people. Um, and, and I think, I think that, that, that relationship God has with the Jews is kind of, uh, antagonistic in some ways to everyone else around them. Um, which is why they had so many enemies in the first place, I think. Uh, and also the land, you know, they, they were to take this land and there's probably reasons why God wanted this land to be where this culture was situated. Uh, and there's probably millions of reasons, but if you're, if, if you can think temporally, if, if you're a being that can see all possible futures, then you know why you choose a certain spot of land or you choose a certain people or uh, why maybe one person should die and another person should live. Maybe that's not even has to do with their, their, uh, their goodness or badness as people. It could have to do with logistics, like uh, and the logistics that that are good for the whole human race in the end. So if if we're if we're talking about like say the say the Canaanites, uh, it's possible that if God had not wiped out the Canaanites, that eventually over over 150, 300, 400 years they would have mingled with Israel and their cultures would have combined in such a way that it would wipe out the culture of, is, of the Israelites, which yeah. would mean no, no more law, no more Ten Commandments, uh, and then Jesus Christ may not have existed, which well, well, is, well, wait a minute. again... The, the, the Ten Commandments are written before the, the wiping out of the Canaanites, right? Right. But I'm saying if the Canaanites had mixed with Israel, we might not have the Ten Commandments because... Right. They may have destroyed them. They may have decided they didn't want to live that way, that Baal was better and we should burn our children. So who knows, you know, right. they, they could have corrupted Israel and then Israel wouldn't be a standard to the nations. Right. So, and, and at the time, I think Israel was probably the, the most moral place on the earth to live. You, you had rules against certain kinds of slavery. You had rules against mistreatment of women. You had, you had rape was punishable by death. You know, it, to, to live in Israel, and a lot of people wanted to live in Israel. They, they converted to Judaism to, to be a part of this place because uh, in, in some ways we look at it now and say, well, this was terribly immoral. But at the time, it was uh, a moral buttress of, 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 in the whole world, it was probably one of the most moral places to live. And, the, uh, you know, you could get a fair trial even. Uh, if you did something wrong, even as a thief, you, you could get a trial, which is amazing. I mean, the court system, uh, and I'm sure that that was burgeoning in other places in the world. But but I think I think I mean, you had you had to have two witnesses and things like these. And these were principles that I think are uh, are the beginnings of a moral society. And I think that's what God was doing. He was he was establishing the uh, the first basic rules of of moral society. So and, th th this, this brings up a few questions. Um, the, so you, you can understand that as a, as a deist, you know, someone who's, who's pushed away from the biblical story for moral reasons, mm -hmm. you can understand that the idea or, or the claim that, well, eventually this would have been a problem. Or, you know, the Canaanites would have mixed, may have mixed with the Israelites in such a way that later it would have been a problem. You can understand that as a deist, that holds no weight. It's it's sort of a, a speculation about future activity. Right. That, well, that there was past activity. I, remember, there's a passage where God says, I've waited 400 years until the iniquity of the Canaanites is full. In other words... He's given them 400 years to stop to, burning to, their babies, stop, you know, mutilating each other and, and burning each other. And, and there's probably other things about that yeah. society that, that, you know, I, I'm sure yeah. that's not yeah, the yeah. only thing. Yeah. So, so let me let me let me get to the to the end of this. Um, Sorry. So the. Um, uh, 
the the idea that it would have been, you know, had the children been allowed to live or something that when you take the stance that, well, eventually that would have been a huge problem, that eventually there would have been, you know, some problem in Israel and some, that you can understand that as, you know, as a deist, that doesn't hold any weight um, because it's it's speculation of the future. Now, the uh, the angle that uh, uh, I've, I wanted to say this because I, I know that it's, it's probably going to come up a lot in my discussions. And, and I there's a reason I avoid the slavery discussion. Um, mm. you, you brought it up a little bit there that there's a reason I avoid it. And usually because when pushed on the slavery question, the, the people that I, you know, consider to be friends of mine and everything, that when pushed on the slavery question, they're, they're forced to take a posture on the, the way things are written that really is uncomfortable for me. And that's why I don't, I don't like pursuing it because I don't, I don't like the, I don't like the angle that people I discuss it with are forced to take hmm. the, the, the amount of grasping at straws, the amount of, you know, really trying to find some way to squint and lean their head to, to just make sure that this, there's some way to explain this. I, I, so that there's a reason if, if anyone watching is wondering why I don't explore the slavery question, there's a reason for that. I just don't like what it does to people, the, that slavery question in relation to the Bible. Um, now, but the, the question that I wanted to get to on the something like the Canaanites is if you take out, because this I, I didn't think we would be discussing the story of Enoch. Yeah. If you take out the book of Enoch, does that do anything to you morally on the story of the Canaanites? Because it seems like a lot is riding on this idea that in Genesis 6, what they were doing was wrong. Yeah, no, uh, it doesn't change anything morally for me. I mean, I mean, maybe slightly, but but no, not really. Because uh, like I said, there there was this there was this 400 year period in which they were given a window to, to change culturally. And, and I, I don't know what God, God may have even tried to send messages to them somehow. I, I don't know. But all, all I can say is that it was a, it was a detestable culture. It was something that if, uh, if, if we were, if, if it was anywhere in the world today, you would be mad at it. It's, it's worse than the Taliban. It's worse than, ISIS. Oh, okay, so, so so I would add though, if it were anywhere in the world today, I still feel we wouldn't be mad enough to say that their children deserve to die. Sure, uh, and 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 to the point of the children, you know, uh, that's where I say, like, I don't know. Um, I think again, we worship a God that isn't just concerned about what's happening right now. He's he's got vision all the way to the future. And, and it's it's OK to say, you know, like it would be immoral for me to do something because of the future. But but to God, it, the future doesn't exist to God. It, it, he's living in every moment at the same time. And, and so uh, because he's outside of time. So so everything is now. Uh, and, and so so it's, it's really it's really hard to, like, even conceptualize as a human. Uh but but I think that if there are if there was any reason uh, to kill children uh, that's morally sufficient, then that's probably what happened. I think that that uh, now the thing is is that uh, I, I just don't know. I mean, I, I really don't, and it's one of those things that I take on faith. That God had a good reason for this to happen. Okay, so um, so let, let's 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 talk about that for a minute because I think this really plays into the Weinberg effect, you know that that I talk about a lot. So for a lot of people, let's say you know, like for me as a deist, looking at the um, situation of what happened with that guy that we were talking about earlier and and the girl, um, there's no justification for that that 
I can look at it and say that that child's done nothing wrong, that this guy is just being wicked and that there's no reason he should be allowed to do that. And that if anyone has the ability to stop it, then they should therefore stop. It. Now, if, if a worldview, if, if a religion puts someone in the position where they view things like that as necessary, so where like you were just saying that well there there must be if there's any reason that would make the the abuse of this girl necessary then that must be what's going on for some reason this was necessary then to me that's that's a representative example of the Weinberg effect it's forcing someone because of their religion to take an immoral stance on something. So to, to without religion, you know, without someone believing what you're saying, without that belief, mm -hmm. then they would say there's no, no reason pressing enough. There's no reason to justify this torment of this child and, and the suffering that it caused and, and probably lifelong, uh, issues that this child is going to have. There's no reason. So, you know, to make this justified, if the religion says, no, there must be because God let it happen, then that, that to me is sort of the materialization, the, 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 the real crystallization of, of the Weinberg effect where someone, because of their belief, because of some dogma takes an immoral stance on a situation. Do, do you see what I'm getting at there? Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, it's, and to me, to me, it's, it's all about like, it's all about what could be. It's all about potential. So, I mean, because I don't know the potential of the alternative, mm -hmm. I, I can't make a judgment call. It, it's like, it's like, okay, and, and th another thing is, is that, you know, if you don't believe that God exists, um, if you don't believe the Bible, you, you may not have to worry about it at all. It, it, it kind of like negates the whole thing. You don't have to worry about the Canaanites. They may not have existed or, is, or they may not have ever been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, certainly the Canaanites may not have existed. I, I mean, I've. I think there's probably archaeological evidence that they existed. I think a lot of the conquest of Canaan is archaeologically confirmed. I, I think that's, uh, I think that's the case. But this girl certainly existed, and the the guy existed, and as a um, as a deist, I can look at this situation and say, here I am, a moral being, and. I can say I would stop this if at all possible. And right. what I wanted to get at, one of the things that you said was you don't know the possible outcomes of everything. And that's obviously true. Nobody knows the future. But mm -hmm. the to take the view that God is a moral agency means that yeah. you have to then, it narrows your perception of the future to say, well, whatever happens in the future, this is the better outcome. Not necessarily, no, uh, because I also believe that free will is something that God uh, permits. So, um, but but in this case, the moral agency thing is probably right, 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 right. right. I, I, God commanded the, the the slaughter of the Canaanites, but yeah, but well, no, um, I was talking about what what happened with this dude in Tennessee. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, in, in that case, it's um, you know, if if God is a moral agency then he's neglecting to do anything about this. So if, you're, if your view of God is that he's a moral agency, then your default assumption must be that this had to happen in order for the most moral outcome to take place. Because as you were saying earlier, if, if God is moral in an agency, you know, if he's a, some, something that intervenes and is moral, then he would be forced by his own moral code to do something about it unless right. 
what's happening there results in the most moral outcome for everyone. Right. So as a deist, I would say that we are not forced to make that assumption. That we can say, no, if at all possible, anyone, including God, should stop that if they are an agency that is moral. And as right. you know, deism doesn't, for most people, obviously I'm not speaking for all deists, but for most people, the deistic God doesn't venture beyond the first cause. The cause, right. the cause to all things. When someone starts talking about God as being a, a person that's moral and acting within the world, and everything, they, they confine themselves to something that must act in this situation or else that what happened right. there must be the most moral outcome. And well, with, with deism, you don't, you don't get a prescriptive morality from deism. Oh, sure we yeah. do. It's, it's, it's in us. That's why I say the, the, right. But there's, there's no, there's no reason for it to be, uh, the, it, it could have arose, arisen by evolution. And, and in that sense, you don't have a good and evil. Well, no, because uh, I, I, well, the, the reason that I, I don't like that is because, you know, we're, we're forced to, the way that we experience morality is in such a way that if there were no mind here to observe it, then it would still be the case that if you reconstructed the scenario, that it would still be immoral. So that, that's why I say if, if, if there were no humans, yeah. then what we know of morality, the way it acts on our own conscience is that if there were, and you put this guy and this girl in that same situation in Tennessee, then that would be immoral. There, there's nothing, it's the same way we were yeah. talking about mathematics earlier, mathematics and physics, is this that before someone discovers and has the brain capacity to calculate Pythagorean theorem, it's still true. It's just a matter of whether or not it's, it's you know, something that can be observed by that being. So if you say... Okay, now there's no humans. The case would be that if there were humans capable of this type of cognition, then that would be an immoral act. And that's what, as a deist, reinforces the idea that if, if there were a moral agency God, one capable of intervening, that does intervene, that has a conscience in it, then it must act there, and yes. if if not, then we are forced to make one of two conclusions: either God is immoral, which means that probably there would be a lot more acting by that God on the universe than there is. And, but the universe that we observe supports mostly the idea that God can't be described beyond the first cause; that it's it's a creator being, not a not an intervening. Uh, agency. That I is. would say, I would say that that it does tell us some things about the deistic God, though. That that if the deistic God can create a universe in which morality is possible, but doesn't follow the laws of morality itself, then then he could be called immoral. Well, uh, well, well, not necessarily. If, if I mean, this, if, 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 if this God is conscious at all. So, you, you know. yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the question. So you, you have to say, you have to get to the point where you say God is a conscience agent, conscious agency. Then you can make that claim. Well, the reason I think it, that he is, and, and I, this goes back to transcendental morality, the, the reason I think God is a, is a conscious being is because uh, morality is the, the conscious dimension imposed upon the universe. Uh, you, you have this this set of laws of consciousness that that flow from beyond uh, what seem to be beyond the universe. Uh, so you have you have built into the universe a set of moral law, um, which even occasionally animals follow. And and so I I think that I think there's a good argument to be made that that the reason why that is is because God is a conscious agent, uh, okay. a moral agent. Okay, so let's let's generate let's let's look back then at what we talked about in the very beginning of the of the talk here. If morality is to be looked at in the same realm as physics and mathematics, right? 
Is God confined by physics? Not confined, but I would say that uh, mathematics and physics are are from His nature. In other words, they they follow rules. They they're logical but, in the sense, but, and they're and they're uh, well, they're uh, reliable as well. Well, and remember something... we, we we we've equivocated those things with morality. Right. We, we we've talked about those things just as as the same way we would morality. Now, if 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 we're forced to view morality in this way, that whatever God does or allows to happen must be confined by the restraints of morality. Yes. Then we could say the same thing about physics and mathematics and any other law that could be observed in the universe that God's also operating under those parameters, which doesn't make a lot of sense at all. Um, so the, the, the view that seems to me to make the most sense because we're, we're, it, it seems to me that we're living in a universe where God doesn't regularly intervene, um, where the, you know, the evidence that's asked for isn't readily presented that God intervenes. But then the problem of complacency mm-hmm. itself is supportive of the idea that there, the is supportive of the idea that if there is a moral agency, God, it would intervene. And would be immoral not to. Right. So that's and, what and that's what pushes everything back to deism for me, is that you, you you have this problem with we don't live in a universe in which a moral agency God is readily apparent. But again, you know, like in Christianity, God intervenes uh, in moral in a moral capacity. He's the judge of every living being. Sure. Yeah. And, and and so as as a judge, he he enacts a sentence and, and all of it. And so uh, there will be a moral balance achieved uh, at the end of all things. There will be this uh, uh, equilibrium. So that is well, it. Well, 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 let's talk about that. The situation in Tennessee again, then. So, but, if, but wait, but I was I was also going to say that. Uh, not only that, but again, back to the idea that if God were to always judge all the time in in, a, in real time, uh, he, nobody would get any work done because we'd all be dead. Right. Uh, they're, they're, <laughs> right. They're, but, but that's what that's what you would confine yourself to when you start pushing the idea of, of a moral agency. God is that you confine yourself to a, to a God that must act on its moral convictions all the time. That's that's uh, that that's the resultant conclusion of all that. So let, let me let me just just get but to because this point he's so. outside of time, he doesn't have to do it in our concept of now. You you understand? Like right, for, right. for so, him, so let, let me let me let me get to this. Let me get to this point here before I forget it. So if if we're talking about what happened in Tennessee, then if 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 you're there watching this happen, and uh-huh. you decide you're not going to stop it. Because you know that later the dude's going to get arrested and go to prison. Does that at all change the immorality of not stopping it? No. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say so. Either. Well, well, so well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I would. So, so the idea that, well, later that dude's going to be punished. Doesn't it all change the idea that letting him do what he's doing is immoral? Right. I'm just saying that that he will be punished. And I, in my worldview, there there will be something done about sure. it. Yeah. Well, well that's, uh, that's 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 good. I'm just saying that the, the I'm talking specifically about the act of letting it happen. Right. And, that, and, that and so here's points. here's here's where it comes back to, to free will and, and the problem of evil. So uh, in my worldview, we have an agency uh, and it would it would be immoral for God to remove our agency, uh, even even when we decide to do things that are against his morality. But, because, but, but stopping the dude from doing that doesn't necessarily mean that you removed his agency. Well, if you stopped every evil act, it would. Uh, if you stopped, see, because there there's a, even among the angels, there was this teasing of an idea that God was a dictator, right? Is, is this that, coming that again he, from the... From the book of Enoch. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. Well, is, is is that? 
Is, is, is that, can you hear me okay now? Yeah, you're, you're in and out. How about now? Yeah. Okay, so. You, there's, there's just a little bit of a lag going on. Okay, well, I'm hoping that it's recording okay. We'll have to stop the recording in a minute, and we can continue the conversation. I just, I know that in a minute yeah. we'll have to stop it because it'll, it'll ear out. Um, but. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I, I, what I was getting at was that you can stop the act of what's going on without at all influencing free will. Um, and that's what I was getting at. I, I don't know if, if there was something you said in the meantime that I didn't hear, but, but that's what I was getting at was that you can, you, th that's sort of the parameters that you create for that God. If, if you, if you start making that God a moral standard and an agency and the, just the most moral being is that you create a God which would therefore intervene in every case, in every situation, and correct it. That's what it would mean to be an ultimately moral, intervening moral agency. Right. And, 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 he, and again, he does intervene in every situation. It's just delayed. It's, it's later. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's done all at once, basically, on, right. on, which is on that day. Which is something that we have no real evidence to believe. No, that, I'm that, not that's arguing from evidence. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I say, you know, as a deist, it's still a moral issue. And yeah, and I mean, if th that, that's why I use the example of if if we're standing there watching this act take place in Tennessee, and we decide we're not going to act on it because later we know he'll get his comeuppance, right? that doesn't at all make the fact that we did not intervene more moral. We're still, well, we should here, still stop it if at all possible. Here, the, the way that I look at it is this, if, if I'm a human in the room, of course it's, it's a moral imperative that I act and use, but, and, and that I think is the same as God having a moral imperative to act upon the, the same thing uh, in such some sort of judgment capacity which I believe that he will. Um, and, but, but if, if, if I think if God were in the room, I think if Jesus Christ, the embodied form of, of God were in the room, then Jesus would do something. I think that on the earth in that capacity, uh, J Jesus did intervene in immoral acts. Like he stopped so the woman from being stoned. Uh, it, you know, there, there were, there were times where he did such things. And, and I think, I think that basically when you have a whole universe to run, there are problems that we don't really take into consideration. Like there's butterfly effects for everything, every single action or non-action, every single right. cause, uh, but, but begets isn't that, a, a, isn't, isn't that whole idea that, you know, the, the conclusion of that is that what happened with that girl in Tennessee must then have been, if prevented, must then have resulted in a worse case, a, a, a scenario which is worse than that in which it was allowed to happen. Right. I mean, that's that's I, I know we've, we've we've danced around that topic a lot. But right. It, right. It's it's unavoidable that you, you're you're forced to kind of take that position when you believe in an in a agency that's a, an intervening God. You're kind of forced to take that position and say, well, since he allowed this to happen, then the, the butterfly effect or, or whatever, you know, must have been at play here where we must. Yeah, let me let me state it in, in the best terms I know how, which is is. Uh, I think it's reasonable to believe that it's possible that in the most moral universe that is possible that that event could still happen. That's all. That's, that's the best way to put that. Yeah. I think yeah. that it's possible that even in the most moral universe that can still happen. So, uh, so as, as a, as a deist, I would say that I'm not under that conviction because 
it's there's there's no reason for me to think that anyone knows what's going to happen next. That the, that there's any agency that says, okay, what's going to happen in the future is made better by what's allowed to happen now, and and that's really what I'm getting at with this when well, I, when, I, when I talk about the Weinberg I'm, effect is is that is that the the view that God is an intervening moral agency forces you to conclude from these situations like what happened in Tennessee that whatever that was must have resulted in a better situation it has to have resulted in a better situation than that in which it was prevented and that's that's the moral problem that constantly pushes me away from the theistic god is that yeah and um right quick so so we'll go back to you and let you let you get to i because I, I can tell there's some, some other stuff you want to get out <laughs> you know um let you get to, get to whatever you else you want to get out and then we'll probably stop the recording pretty soon and then uh, oh. we'll, we'll we'll continue the conversation after that but i just i don't want the recording to air out and we lose our our current sure. discussion okay um uh, i I'm, I'm drawing a blank i there 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 was something that you said that i wanted to comment on and and uh I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, well, that's all right. I mean, if 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 you re if you watch back through, and you say, okay, that's what I wanted to comment on. We can by all means do a sequel discussion. I mean, we can do a, right. a you know a, a Reed versus Barrett part two. You know, <laughs> where, where, where we yeah. where we examine more of these concepts. Um, but yeah, that that's probably. I would like good. to have more discussions too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that's probably a good point to just to go ahead and stop the recording. And um, that way I don't have to worry about losing the conversation. That way I can make sure that I have a copy of it. And I remember what I was going to say. I remember. Um, okay. <laughs> so just real, sorry, just real quick. So it's not necessarily that the universe would be better off when this happens. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's necessarily better, uh, but, but, but or, or that it's necessarily has to be better. Uh, for this to be allowed, um, although it could, in some sense of the word, uh, have a positive effect on millions of people. Like, say, say this person becomes a public speaker and speaks about their horrible experience and changes people's lives in a way that that allows them to help cope sure. with their problems. Yeah. And so, so you can you can turn a bad thing into a better thing. Uh, that it doesn't mean it's a good thing. The, but but as a it, but as it a, can be turned in as, as a deist, I would say it would still be better had that not, thing not happened. I think that's true. I think that's true. Uh, yeah. I I wouldn't say that it's um, and, and that's the, that that's another thing is that like these are calls that even people are really supposed to make. You feel that in yourself, like you could never make that call mm -hmm. uh, on what's better: millions of people being helped. One person being hurt very badly, and 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 it's not something that that I would even weigh in on, you know. Yeah, uh, I think that as 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 humans, we are. Uh, it's a little much for us yeah. emotionally, even. Uh, so I think that if there is a God, He has to deal with stuff like this on a daily basis, you know. Sure. Uh, and 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 Im imagine billions of of these problems. And, and, and I think that, I think that, uh, the God that I worship cares about people, individuals. Um, he aches when we ache and he's rejoicing when we rejoice and that he loves our souls that individually he cares about us as people and, and, and does not like bad things to, to happen. I think, I think that, uh, not everything is, is necessarily his will, uh, that there are evils done in, by us on each other that grieve him. Um, and, and so I just wanted to say that, that, that I think, I think that the, the moral God that I described, uh, is concerned about people and is concerned about every situation. I think he's hyper concerned. In fact, about right. every situation. And I think that um, it's 
So it's possible we live in a universe where maybe suffering is, uh, in, in a way, going to result in a positive, and yeah. and, and it does in our lives sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and th that's what I was getting at is that you, you sort of, with the theistic God, that's sort of the conclusion you have to come to, is that the suffering is going to net result in a positive, somehow. Yeah, um, I also but, think that it, it's there to tell a story, though. I think there's a narrative yeah. that that's uh, kind of archetypical in nature that uh, it's the hero story. It's the story of the hero who has to have a a villain, a a a, a converse force that that is um, antagonistic, and right. and so with that, it, it grinds out this beautiful. A narrative that results in, in in a happy ending. I think that uh, I think that all of our stories reflect that story. Um, okay, well let's and, and let's you, let's go ahead right quick. I, I think we we should go ahead and stop it because I'm 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 getting concerned okay. that, the, that the video thing's okay. going to air out. But all right, we can definitely do a, a part two uh, discussion of this if you if you want to uh, drill down further on this topic. Um, Okay. So I, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. We'll, we'll we'll continue talking after this, but I just want to you know get out before I stop the recording. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and feel like it was productive. And I did do it again. Okay. All I right. hope every I hope everybody enjoys it. All right. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and stop the recording, and we will continue our discussion for a little while, and then hopefully, if it gets into some really good meaty stuff, we'll delay that and get to that in a, in a sequel discussion okay so all right sounds good all right